of the covalent bonding is one of the diatomics, di meaning two. Well, two chlorine atoms will get together, both needing one more electron for their octet. See now if they share their electron pair, chlorine seven, then eight, this chlorine seven and eight. So they both end up having their octets filled and there's a sharing of this electron pair between them. That's why chlorine gas is Cl2. Another example of covalent bonding is for carbon being in the middle of the table with four valence electrons. What it needs is four more. So by pairing up here, we'll see that chlorine, needing one more electron, will share with one of carbon's vacancies. So chlorine has its octet. Fluorine, one more to give its octet. So we'll see the fluorine, a chlorine, a fluorine, a chlorine. This now gives everybody their octet. And what we'll see is a chlorofluorocarbon being formed, known as CF2Cl2, as a gas. So to continue with covalent bonding, we see oxygen needing two more electrons for eight. Hydrogen has one electron available. So one hydrogen's electron can fill this empty space. Another one for this gives oxygen its octet. The two protons, remember hydrogen is one proton, one electron. The two protons of water, however, are positively charged on one side of the water molecule. So what can actually happen is with these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen, they can actually strip away one of the protons. This is kind of a reversal in order to create an ion that pulling an electron away. Remember, pulling an electron away will create a negative charge where the electron goes. But now, the positive proton here brings a positive charge with it. So when this happens in water, what we see is oxygen, more electronegative, keeps the octet of electrons. Hydrogen, on the other hand, the one proton, will actually be pulled away to another water. And what this results in is what's called the hydronium H3 plus cation in water, and the hydroxide OH minus anion in water. And this is what the pH scale is based on, the plus and minus charges in water. It's called the dipole nature of water. Now another type of bonding which actually occurs between molecules and not atoms is called the hydrogen bond, which is more specifically a proton bond, because what happens in water is a proton being the positive portion of the water, can be pulled away by the electron pair, the lone pair of another neighboring water. So what happens now is when the electron pair grabs onto the proton of another water, this is what makes water stick together. And this is known as the hydrogen bond, but the proton bond is actually what's happening. So one electron pair grabbing onto a proton of another water makes these two stick together. And by pulling the positive charge to one side of the atom, it makes this other water more negative down here, which means it's going to grab onto the positive part of another water, which will grab onto the positive part of another water. And this is what makes water stick together. Okay, now still considering covalent bonding, some variations of the octet stop sign still show that these atoms will have octets, eight electrons around them. But the covalent bonds will now be for oxygen, remember needing two more electrons for eight, will form a double bond. This is why oxygen is known as O2. For nitrogen, three vacancies. Two nitrogens will get together to form a triple bond. One, two, three covalent bonds between them. This is one of the strongest bonds in nature, the triple bond of nitrogen. Okay, more covalent bonds occur when elements in group three, they don't follow the octet rule at all, aluminum or boron. In this example, aluminum forms what's called a trivalent bond, three bonds. But remember oxygen, it adheres to the octet rule, two, four, six, eight electrons on oxygen. But again, to make the trivalent of aluminum being covalent bonds, we're sharing these pairs. So there's two, four, five, six electrons. That's three bonds for aluminum. And now on oxygen in the middle, we see one lone pair, two lone pairs. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, sticking to the octet. And here are the other aluminum, two, four, six electrons, three bonds for aluminum. And boron forms the same way. 
This molecule here turns out to be alumina, aluminum oxide. More covalent bonds here, away from the octet now, phosphorus, we'll see, can actually form one, two, three, four, five covalent bonds. This is ten electrons, but oxygen here, we'll see, has two, four, six, eight electrons still. But even though it's not being bonded, this electron here, remember an electron has a negative charge. So with one here, two here, three here, it gives a three negative charge overall to what's called the phosphate anion. So covalent bonding here with five bonds for phosphorus and the oxygen still adheres to the octet. Now phosphorus is known to do some strange things because what we can see is that phosphorus can form three bonds as in phosphorus trichloride or it can form five bonds. So what we'll see happening is this lone pair of electrons, there's two electrons there, will actually begin to split up and as it splits up we'll see, remember the covalent nature of bonding, is an electron wanting to pair up? Well if these become unpaired what happens is now it's available to form two new bonds. So if we picture chlorine bonding to each one of these, it would be one, two, three, four, five bonds. This is phosphorus pentachloride. So phosphorus can form between three or five bonds, all in electron pairs, covalently. Following again the idea of the electron pairs splitting open to form new bonds, sulfur is underneath oxygen in the periodic table. With two lone pairs of electrons, sulfur can now form one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. Oxygen, remember the octet, sticks to that rule of two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sulfur now, though, one covalent bond, two, three, four, five, six covalent bonds now. And what happens, remember hydrogen, one proton, one electron? The one proton will actually be pulled away by water. This is what makes sulfuric acid a strong acid. The proton leaves the electron behind because oxygen is more electronegative. So with an electron negative charge on this oxygen, leaves a proton with its positive charge being able to be taken up by water. And this happens in two places on the sulfate anion. So 1H, 2H leaving is a sulfate anion and two protons in water, making sulfuric acid a strong acid. To show covalent bonding again, in sodium bicarbonate, hydrogen will actually stay covalently bonded to an oxygen, but sodium will become ionized in water. So sodium gives up its electron to fill oxygen's eighth shell. So we have two, four, five, six, eight electrons for oxygen, but there's a negative charge out here on this oxygen. This hydrogen stays bonded covalently, this oxygen with its octet. Carbon. Notice the octet, two, four, six, eight electrons, and oxygen here, two, double bonded to carbon, four, six, eight electrons. Sodium bicarbonate is known as baking soda. To now show how covalent bonding can form long chains and polypeptides, we see carbon, again with the octet rule, will have two, four, six, eight electrons around it. But this carbon to nitrogen bond is what's called a peptide bond. And this forms between amino acids. So we see with nitrogen's octet, we have a lone pair here, which would kind of give a negative charge out here. Two, four, six, eight electrons around that. So this is what's called the backbone, the amino acid backbone, forming through peptide bonds between nitrogen and carbon. So now a nitrogen to carbon bond, this isn't a peptide bond, we see what will happen on this carbon can now form a chain. and This is called the amino acid side chain. And we see this really shows the octet because see something like carbon here will have two, four, six, a double bond to another carbon, eight electrons. This carbon, two, four, six, eight electrons. 
bonded to nitrogen, two, four, six, eight electrons. See how important the octet becomes here with a double bond of carbon again. Two, four, six, eight electrons. This carbon here, two, four, six, eight electrons. So this now shows that a amino acid side chain, tryptophan, can be hanging off the end of this carbon, which is then bonded through a peptide bond, up to where another amino acid side chain could be hanging off. This is how amino acids form proteins by the polypeptide bonds forming proteins.